we are here with Chelsea Tolman, the author of the book we are discussing, which is amazing. I love like your little fox. There, <laughs> like how fun was that to shoot the, you know, going out and shooting the photo? It was so much fun. It was a whole day. I had like three uh, wardrobe changes and just did a ton of really fun cemetery pictures that I loved. In fact, that dress I bought specifically for that photo shoot, um, not knowing that I was going to use it on the book even. So Yeah, that's exciting. And what I like is you don't even know that it's a cemetery in the picture. Like you can't tell it is, but it's just got that kind of feel. I mean, you can see like one little headstone off, but that's so fun. So tell me like what, what was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for you to like start writing? Like what led you to finally like start just going for it? Um, it was time. I, I had put it off for a long time. It was about a five year process. Wow. So I decided I really wanted to do this and, but having the time to organize my thoughts and putting all of your stories like in a comprehensive manner and then editing all the stories, it, it takes a long time. So from the time that, that I knew I had enough content for a book to the time that I actually started writing it was about five years. Okay. Um, yeah. Cause I, I kept starting it and then, you know, life just gets in the way. And oh my gosh. Yes. It, so. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that was it. But once I actually sat down, the catalyst was, um, that I, I just, you know, you just have a feeling that mm -hmm. it's just time. You just need to stop making excuses. Yes. There, there isn't, isn't any other time that it's going to happen. It's either going to happen now or it's not. And so, yeah, I just, I said, that's, that's what I'm going to do. My husband supported me a hundred percent and helped me get through it. And it took about a year from, from starting the actual, you know, detailed writing to okay. finish the publishing. Okay. And then are you just selling it on Amazon or where else are you putting it out? So it's on Amazon. It's on, um, it's at uh, King's English Bookshop and okay. Weller Bookworks as well. Okay. Yeah, I know I had a couple of people asking, is it at the library? I don't want to, like, I can't spend the money, but I really want to read it. Like, how do I get it? And um, I'm like, well, yeah. tell your library you want a copy and maybe they'll, they'll invest or, you know, it'll, it takes time. I think that beginning, it's hard yes. to find some of these things until it starts spreading. And I think Caleb had that kind of same when he, you know, when his book came out last year that I know I wanted to just to get it from the library and mm -hmm. um, check it out quick. And it was like, nobody had it because it was so new. So I was like, darn it, I got to order it. That's fine. Cause it's yeah, it's not, I'm, was actually, like, I'm actually in the process now of getting it in the library um, mm -hmm. here in Salt Lake. So it's, it's still going to be a little bit longer, but I'm in the process of it right now. So that's awesome. Now, are you working on another book at all? Or are you just kind of reveling in this first, you know, kind of thing? Uh, you know, I think I'm always working on, on the next book. Um, I've always been a writer. Um, I enjoy my experiences and I love the fact that, that I, I have the, enough of these really cool experiences to share with people. Yeah. So I'm, also, I'm definitely writing the second book. It's not, it's going to take a lot longer than the first book did because I've just opened my new business and yeah. you know, trying to keep the, the blog going, which is a lot more work than people think. <laughs> it takes yes. a lot of yes. time. So yeah, there's, there are a lot of things that, um, that I'm involved in that is going to kind of hamper the progress of the second book, but there will be, there will be a second book. Well, and just like with, you know, with doing the videos and stuff, we need the experience to put into the content. So mm -hmm. you've got to do the work and work for a while to then bring that back to the blog and the book and everything, because I think we only have so much experience and so we got to get more and then bring more back too. So it does take time with our business, I think, to keep getting more under our belt, so to speak, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. what would you, would you like to go into any other avenue of, um, you know, are you big on uh, Instagram or anything or? I do. I do have Instagram. I'm, I'm not great at social media. I try really hard. <laughs> yeah. 
I really do. I, 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 I just have to admit I'm not great at it. Um, but I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and so, some months I do really well and I'm, you know, have a lot of good content and I'm engaging and then yeah. I'm just kind of absent for a little while. Um, I try. <laughs> have you gotten a lot of, have you gotten a lot of feedback, a lot of like emails and things that people are reading the book and then sending you messages and like positive, negative, what are you getting back from people? Yeah, it's been incredible. Uh, the responses that I've gotten, people just absolutely make me feel like so important. You know, they made me feel so good about the way that I've written these stories. Um, I've only had one, well, I've only had one negative comment on, on Goodreads. I don't know who the person was. I don't know if maybe he was some kind of troll because he didn't seem to know anything about the book um, with his comments. Um, but I, I just haven't had any negative experiences and I'm That's sure awesome. it's, it's the way that it is. It's all, it, it's coming, but, uh, but I haven't. And a really cool phenomenon when I first published the book and started advertising it, people who were buying my book sent me pictures of them reading it in materials and it was it, it I wasn't prompted it just all of a sudden I started getting all these pictures of my people reading my book in in their house in front of their fireplace at the beach it was really cool yeah that's really fun to know that like part of you is in all these places because that's really yeah. it's, it's a huge piece of you I think one of the things I said in my kind of review is, is it, it feels like a diary like this feels like a, a diary of just your journey up to this point and some of these moments that stuck with you. And I felt like I was kind of just reading Chelsea's diary along the way. So it's like you've, you've opened that to all these people where they're sitting in their situation. So that's really cool that you get to see them being there. I think the one question I wanted to ask you, like which story in this book did you want to tell the most? Because you tell a lot of little stories, but which one to you was kind of that, the, the one you wanted to share the most of all of them? I have not been asked that question before. <laughs> um, you know, I think it was, it was actually the scariest story for me to write, the most painful story for me to write, but it was uh, Regret and Grief, and it was um, the death of my best friend. Uh, where I, I felt it was important because mm. it shows the real human side of, you know, how in, in real life, you know, we, we make mistakes or we second guess what we're doing or we don't read a situation correctly and it becomes a very painful situation. And once he passed away, I couldn't repair that, that it was over and done. And you have to deal with that, you know, and, yeah. and deal with that. And director being in the industry, in fact, he was my first apprentice, um, which I said in the story, he was my very first apprentice and ended up being my best friend. So he was with me during this journey of, of being a female director. And then I really feel like I let myself down and him down. And those human elements are really important to share along with your successes and, and other situations as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I actually have that as a note that I love that you share the fails along with the, you know, the, the successes that we make mistakes and we have to learn from them. And here's what I've learned along the way as well from making some missteps and losing my shoe and, you know, all these <laughs> moments, which I actually had that happen the other day. I was like, this is a Chelsea moment. This is so funny. I was backing up a drive and I was walking backwards and my shoe popped off. And so the last pallbearer grabbed it and like threw it up to me. And it was like, <laughs> just keep yeah. going. But yeah, those moments, going. you know, it's just, you just roll with it and do what you can. And, um, no, it's awesome. It was, it's good. It's, I don't always love reading books about what I do every day. It's kind of like watching movies. I think, you know, you're a little more critical and it's like, okay, I live this a lot. So it's not always, but some of your stories just took me back to moments that I lived. So it was kind of fun to go back and, oh my gosh, my first time in the prep room and my first time alone with the body and my first time doing this. And 
oh, I remember dressing somebody in this. And so I kept going back to my own moments by, li you know, reading through yours. So that was, I loved it. It was really good. It was really yeah, good. Yeah, I've so. been um, really kind of surprised and, and humbled that so many funeral directors are saying the same thing, that they enjoy reading it because it does remind them, you know, number yeah. one, that what we're in this business for. And then number two, those little experiences that they've had, because we could all write, like every one of us. Oh, yes, yes. Write dozens of books, you know, and I, I think it, I think it would be fun if everybody did, you know, yeah. write, write these experiences. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Yeah.